Because most products, uh, it comes from the marketplace and clearly South Africa had these huge coal reserves and some natural gas reserves in Southern Africa at least and uh, rather than having to import more and more and more crude oil to make the synthetic, make the jet fuel, there was an alternative in line with what we do in petrol and diesel is also to do the same with jet fuel and use the rich abundance that this country has in terms of reserves and using our technology to convert that into this fully synthetic jet fuel. So it was really driven by the market and it's a, obviously a very sensible thing to do from an, an energy security point of view. The country is now depend, more dependent on its own resources rather than having to import so much. The fact that we're already supplying about a 50% mix to our Tambo airport of uh, synthetic and conventional jet fuel, it, it means now that we have the authorization to go 100% synthetic, it just means we have more flexibility. So if there's any problem with crude supply, then we can ramp up and, and put more and more of, of the synthetic jet fuel into, into the mix, right up to 100% as we say. So that's really important. Customers will be supplied. We saw the demand during the World Cup, for example, how demand went up. We could cope with that quite easily by relying heavily on jet fuel made in this country of alternative uh, feedstocks. Economic benefit is more driven by a, a, an, an alternative source of supply, which is obviously really important for our customers to be supplied under all circumstances. Uh, in terms of, of the in, in environmental impact, it's a very clean burning fuel, so the emissions coming out of the back end of the jet engine would be better in terms of nitrous oxides, in terms of CO2, uh, than conventional uh, jet fuels. However, that's uh, one must look at the full life cycle, and of course as a company we're doing an enormous amount to reduce the carbon footprint of our full processes. So I think there will be economic benefits as well as environmental benefits for the consumer. We're not making this 100% uh, commercially available yet. Uh, we, we, the tech, it's very important to get the technology in place to be able to do that as our plans unfold. As I said, at the moment we supply a mixture, which uh, so we already have the benefit uh, uh, of this. And as time goes by, we will, as it makes commercial sense, we will make more and more of this 100% uh, available. Maybe in other parts of the world as well, uh, as well, where we are building using our technology to build plants, using other countries' natural resources to convert into transportation fuels and probably in time jet fuel as well. So it will unfold over time. Well obviously this is uh, South Africa as our home base. We have a very large facility out in Secunda which takes both coal and natural gas from Mozambique and converts those into transportation fuels and chemicals including the, the jet fuel that we uh, flew down on here to Cape Town today. Uh, but in other parts of the world we already have a very successful joint venture gas liquids joint venture in the Middle East in the state of Qatar in partnership with Qatar Petroleum we uh, have another one using our technology being constructed in Nigeria in partnership with Chevron and the Nigerians we have uh, our next probably big investment decision would be in China on a coal to liquids plant there very large investment in fact it'll be the largest single project investment by a foreigner into China if, if we make this investment decision and all of those plants have the potential also, depending on the commercial viability of the product slate that we, we go for, to produce this jet fuel there too.